Hi there. Uh, I thought I would do a little video on Cubase's chord track. Now, I can't really remember what version of Cubase this was introduced to. I think it might have been 7. So, you'll need version 7 to see this. It might be in 6.5 or 6, but I, I honestly can't remember. Um, so, let's get on with it. What I've got here is... Paddy sound and a bassy type sound. So what I'm going to do is use this to create a chord progression that I like the sound of. So the first thing I need to do is make sure this is on monitor. And if you do that, audition chords, that doesn't even have to be on as far as I'm aware. So we can draw a chord in, right click, draw tool, X, double click on it, and then we have the editor. So we can choose our chord. Right, you see how it's not making any sound? Okay, it's not making any sound because that's not on. If I do that on now and it says use monitor tracks, which is that one. Now as soon as I touch it, you hear it. I'm not going to talk about this scales uh, part at the moment. I'm just going to talk about these chords. going to start with a G minor and this is great this little you double click on the chord that you've drawn and this editor comes up and it gives you a hand now if I wanted to put in another chord I just hit the add button and you see the other chords appeared there now the great thing is I can come to this chord assistant and this will now suggest chords to me that go with my G minor now I can got a complexity here so if it's at one it's not going to give me anything at two it's giving me minimum complexity, and then if I go all the way up to 7, it comes up with some crazy stuff um, that I have no idea what they are because I don't know my theory that well. But all you need to do is make sure that doesn't happen. If you touch them, you can hear it. going to take the complexity out a bit so V and D minor V and D minor there's not a V in a scale it's C that actually stands for the fifth chord but I'm not going to get into any of that stuff so so the great thing is you can suggest a chord and then go that sounds okay to me, so I'm just going to add another chord that's here and see what else we've got. So. Okay, that, yeah. And I'll just add a final chord. Okay, so that sounds okay. So if I just press play, and let's hear what it sounds like. Okay, that'll do. Right, so now we've got that up here. So Obviously, I want to play this, so what I can do is I can just select all of those, hold down Alt, drag it down, drop it, and there's our chord progression. So then I could turn this off, and it will just play these chords. Okay, great, so you've got your little chord progression there, but what I can do now, because I've got that... I can then copy that, so let's just call that, and we'll call this bass. So what I can do now is come in here, and just delete all of these, 
and then we have the root note, the bass root note, so G, A, B, G. So, Okay, so I've noticed that that and that, I wouldn't really want that. I wouldn't want that, so I would maybe put that up to there. Again, it's just me being me. And how far up are we? Okay, so... That's still playing the G, isn't it? Is it? So... Yeah, so it doesn't sound that great. So what I'm going to do is delete that and delete that because I, I didn't notice that those two were the same. So we're going to change this. Let's change it to an E. See what it sounds like. Okay, so let's try that. So we'll do the same again. And copy these down. I'm just looking for something with a bit of variety just to show you. Get rid of all of these. So there we have a G, A, B, E. Wow, that is some, that's uh, pretty deep. Maybe it's too low. So, we can put it up an octave. Right, anyway, let's just see if we can find a decent bass sound. Okay, so I got, I wouldn't say a decent bass sound, but it's a bass sound nonetheless. We'll use that kick drum, that'll do, for our purposes. <sighs> Me and my fingers. Right, so let's see what we've got here. So from all of this, we created our chord progression so let's just see what we've got I'll just let you hear the chord progression again okay then got a bass line that we used the root notes and a kick drum. Right, so the kick, then the bass. Obviously, if you were going to do anything with these, you would probably have to EQ them, I guess. And like, in fact, I just use the Q bass EQ. Right, so there's a quick EQ for the pad. Um, the kick. So, and then 
solo the bass. The bass is pretty brutal. It's very, very subby. So there you have it, it's just a little quick way of using the the chord track. Basically we created a chord progression, we then took that chord progression down onto your track, then turn the chord track off, we then copied that onto your bass line and used the root notes, so the G, the A, the B and the E, to create our bass line. And I've just all all I've done there is is just used a, a VST with a bass arpeggiator. That's all. You can obviously draw your own bass lines in and add a kick drum. So it's just basically something that gives you some ideas. Bye.